Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple James. We just finished a huge group live help, and I think everybody got a really good idea of how to solve their problem. Live help is evolving. I really hope that we're able to uh, go live and stream this straight to YouTube so that all the viewers on YouTube can actually learn about rainwater drainage, uh, go actually live and here in the studio. This is really the office, <laughs> but in the studio and maybe have special guests so that we can really learn about rainwater drainage and solve some problems that you guys are having so much difficulty doing. You know, it's basically, it's so simple to me and to all of the other contractors, collection of water and discharge. Once you figure those two things out, you can solve your problem, no matter what it is, collection and discharge. So stay tuned. I posted this long, it's an hour long video, um, but I put chapter points in it so you can easily jump from, you know, an exterior problem to a yard drain to a downspout, whatever it is. And you can just jump right to that uh, section and see how we solve that problem using live. Help. There's Carol. I see Carol. Everybody needs to turn on their video. Just kind of look at your phone. You'll figure it out or your whatever you're using. I can hear everybody. As long as you connect to your audio, I'll be able to hear everyone. Thank you. So the most people I ever had was 40 people. That was really cool. I mean, the pictures on your screen, if you're on your phone, they're really tiny. <laughs> so, <laughs> but on the laptop, it's not so bad. Or if you're putting it up on the TV, it's even better. Hey, Chuck. Good right to see down. you. I've been watching your videos for quite a while. I'm calling from uh, North Carolina near Fort Bragg area. Um, I'm trying to see if I can switch uh, so that it's front camera instead of the back camera. But if not, I can just kind of pan it. You, yeah, you can. It's, if you're using an iPhone, it's up at the top. I don't know where it is on the Galaxy. Oh, okay. I see it. There we go. Thank you. Yep. So uh, this is my backyard right here. Uh, relatively okay. new construction. Plenty of toys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The biggest problem, as you can see, is this hill, right? So with this okay. hill, all that water is coming down, and it's ending right before – there's kind of like a ditch, and it's ending right before the concrete patio that we had put in. And I kind of started that area with a little bit of uh, some gravel, just kind of make it look nice. Uh, but I was also gone for a while, so that gravel – has a few weeds poking through it. So don't pay attention to that. So then it drains, the water drains kind of comes down here and uh, goes um, into the neighbor's backyard and as well as my yard, kind of like this fence line really highlights uh, right. that the water is like right behind the fence and it just drains out. Same thing on the other side, uh, cause that, um, that hill really splits it. Uh, and then it drains all the way out there, kind of like okay. behind the yard. Not really okay. necessary to show you. I'm going to flip That's again. Okay. I'm going to show you the biggest problem. The biggest okay, problem is... Well, wait. Yeah. Before you go before you go around front, flip your phone back around and show me sure. that downspout that's coming down into the gravel. Yep. So you got two of them or just one, okay? Just so, the one side. Yep. Now take your camera and go up to the roof. Show me how much roof we got. Does that roof, is there another roof coming down to that? Yep. There is. So you got a, yes, you have a lot of water coming down into that area, not just from the yard. That's a problem. You know, the hill is a problem, but that roof is more of a problem than the hill. So, okay, I'm just letting you know what I see as we go through here. So now you can go around front and show me what, what's out front. The big problem. <laughs> the big problem is that there's no storm drain um, that the city have put in to okay. uh, let all the water drain out. Okay. And I'm gonna flip it again here. So that kind of, that patch of dead grass kind of shows where that water uh, populates. And right. then this entire area is flooded. This front yard becomes flooded. Same thing on the other side. And it just has nowhere to drain. I think this is where we might switch from Wi-Fi to cellular data. So I might lag a little bit, but right, that's yeah. Fine. Okay, so are you in an HOA or this city? HOA. Okay. Um, there is there is storm drains. They're just at the end of the street. All that gutter goes someplace. Um, so it does go to the end of the street. And it doesn't look like water's pooling in front of your house a little bit. 
but not yeah. not a lot. So pretty pretty straightforward problem. If we start right here, since you're out here, yep. basically I, I would suggest a sump pump. I mean, it's almost almost always in flat level yards, we're gonna end up having to lift that water up and send it out. So you could you could, you know, if you understand and watch some of the videos about installing that sump pump. You could come right out there to the sidewalk and put a pop up, and that will work fine. That's going to move all that water you know, right out here. Uh, better, that's why I asked if you were in the HOA, better would be to cut that little section of walk. And if you haven't seen how we make a V cut into the curb, I would suggest you do that. But you need to get permission from the HOA to do so. So that's a, you know, you can deal with that portion of it. But this is the discharge. There's two things in every Every job for this is for everyone. There's collection, and he's already got the some of it collected, you know, with the gravel in the back. Is there a pipe underneath of that gravel? Um, see, that's what I was trying to figure out earlier. The only thing that I know is that the city water comes in through this little access through the water meter, and as well as this. I don't know if there's a pipe actually underneath the gravel. It no, no. Should I'm talking, be right. No, I'm talking right. about the I'm talking about the gravel that you have around the back patio. Oh no, no, there's no pipe there. Okay, so there needs to be a pipe in there. That's that's really important. So let's go let's go around back, and um, we'll start there. These downspouts here in the front, they're they're contributing to that problem as well, and they really need to go down underground and go out towards the front in, in another system, you know, with a pop-up at the, at the uh, sidewalk. That, that will help. All of your roof is catching so much water. People don't think about it, but 2,000 square feet of roof, so that's basically half of your house. Um, you know, front half is 2,000, back half is 2,000. In a one-inch rainfall, that 1,100 gallons of water is gathered in a one inch rainfall on a 2000 square foot roof, 1100 gallons. I mean, think how many trash cans full of water that is. That's tremendous amounts of water that's coming off of that roof. So it's real important that those get underground. So again, you know, a, a downspout drain going out to the front from here. And I would do it on the other side if you have the, the time and the inclination to do that. But um, now go on out back and let's look at that back area. Where that water is pulling up in front of the fence, I think you'll solve that problem by doing, doing this right up here. If you can dig out that gravel and get a perforated pipe underneath, you know, surrounded by that gravel, connect that downspout drain and just send that right to a sump pump right beside the, the house. If you'll turn to your right, I think it's to your right. Yeah, so somewhere yep. right there, you know, in that corner, Go ahead and put um, put a sump pump there and bring the downspout. And we're going to call it a French drain. When you take that gravel out, put both of those into the sump pump. And then it's just inch and a half pipe all the way out to the front. And you will solve that problem completely, completely. So where would that pipe? So I understand that the pipe would go here, but where would it go here? You don't need one over there. Oh, okay. Believe it or not, you really don't. Um, I think if you if you catch that roof water and you allow that uh, gravel perforated pipe, once you install it around the patio to collect some more water, the amount of water that would be left over there by the fence is going to be negligible, if any. If you need to add more to the system, then over by the fence, turn your camera to the right a little bit. Right over there, you could put a catch basin and actually bring that back over to the sump basin that you're going to install. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, but I don't. I really don't think you're gonna need that over there. I think you'll solve this problem once you put the, the roof drain, the downspout, and create a French drain where the gravel is. That didn't come back. So, so guys, you need to, you need to uh, mute your microphones. Yeah. Real important, real important. <laughs> yeah, if, if it's a problem, just mute your microphone for just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I think you'll solve that problem. You catch basin if needed over there by the chair 
or somewhere where it's low, where you know it's low right there. Um, okay. The solid pipe over to, yeah, there. that's a better spot, Molly, right there. So you yeah. could put the cat space in there. That's the low point. And that's going to pick up that neighbor's water because their roofs, I'm sure, is splashing right out there as well. Um, tremendous amounts of water come off that roof. But number one, put that downspout drain on your house underground and send it over to the sump basin. Number two, where the gravel is, if you'll dig that out and put a perforated pipe in there, surround that with the gravel. Do you have a sand base? You said you're by Fort Bragg. That's probably sand, isn't it? Yeah, it's all sand. Uh, well, okay. this soil is not that bad. It's mainly uh, good black soil, but this right here is all sand. Okay, so I would I would suggest that you encase the the system with fabric. Whether you could use Easy Flow, it works really good, um, or you could just you know wrap the perforated pipe with a uh, some type of geofabric so you don't get so much sand into the system. And you solved that problem. I mean, I promise you that you'll solve that problem. Okay, makes sense. Thank you very much, Chuck. Yeah, and you know, guys, I'm we're recording this, so I am going to give send everybody. If you'll uh, send me an email so that I can send you guys a copy of this, um, that way everybody will get a copy in case in case they don't remember. Is it raining there, Mom? Yeah, just it- a little bit. It's always raining. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go on to another person, and if you have any questions later, send me an email. Um, and as you get into that project, if you have a problem with it, uh, you know, give me a call. I can do another Zoom with you. It's no problem. I'll ha- be happy to do it. But I think you got this. I really do. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Chuck. Okay. So who who wants to go next? Uh, I'll go, Chuck. If you can hear me. Scott. Yeah. Scott. Did. Scott. Okay, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead. Hi, Tiffany. Okay. Okay, I'm going to switch my camera around and show you where the problem at the bottom of the basement stairs. So we get uh, right here at the bottom of this basement, we get water coming right underneath there. And then also it comes in in the boiler room. Uh, alongside the wall here and this wall was an original um, outside wall now there's an addition on the other side but that's the original um, wall right there so let me show you and there's the basement stairs so let me show you the outside okay Scott where are you in Kirtland Ohio okay know where you are yeah Uh, I'm in Kirtland Ohio Yep, I know where that is. Uh, five miles yep. from, yep, from Lake Erie. Yep. So here's, uh, it's really sunny out here. Good. Here's the outside <laughs> of the basement, and this this is all concrete, and it was um, there are footer drains underneath here, uh, that were put in. Uh, they redid this whole side here because it has a history of having that water at the basement. Okay. And uh, they they put the um drains and did all that uh in 2010 and i had some guys uh like four years ago come out and run cameras down here and i'll show you the whole system here so they had cameras going up underneath i think the footer probably goes underneath the the concrete here and then this drain goes is not connected to the rest to the footer this one goes underneath and then we have a big drop off where all the water is uh, discharged into this creek. Here's here's more uh, gutters, okay. and I think I know what the problem is. I just want to hear you tell me what the problem is, but I think I, I actually might know. So uh, here's the okay. So we have this huge ravine where, and, and the pipes are uh, sticking out back here. So here they all the discharge back. over there. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, and here's water. We have a walkout basement here. Okay. And so what do you more. think? What do you think that well, problem is? Okay, yeah, and here's here's the discharge uh underneath there. You can't really see it, but yep. Uh okay, I think the problem is so a couple years ago uh, I had I had water in the basement and I 
thought I had some guys come out and they said it was because of the footers, but it turns out it was actually because of the radiator uh, pipes underneath the, the floor. But I didn't know that. So I had these guys come out and they dug from the edge of the deck here, this whole area, and they put in new footer and they tarred up the, the side of the wall and connected, you know, made sure that this downspout was working. But they said underneath the deck was uh, crushed and not working. So my, I think it took me a long time to maybe figure this out that I just have to get this deck, uh, the, the footer that are coming from this drain in the back and then this one uh, and then underneath the deck, they're probably not working correctly or crushed. Okay, so did you see them uh, install the footer systems that, they, that you're talking about? Well, I didn't actually, I saw all the guys digging holes. They had to hand dig it because um, they can't bring any machinery back here. And I saw that and they, you know, I saw them tarring the wall, but I, I didn't actually uh, see, you know, I don't even remember, maybe I did, but. Okay. I've done a lot of research now, so I know way more about it now on understanding what, what's going on probably. Okay, so let me, let me I'm going to let you talk to Tiffany for just one second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she actually, um, this is Tiffany. Can you see her on the screen right there? Um, let me see. I see you. I got so sunny, I can't see anything. Yeah, that's okay. You can actually go back inside too, Scott. Okay, so Scott, just kind of listen real quick. I'm going to let Tiffany tell you about finding the footer. It's so important to make sure that whatever they installed is at the footer. And she just, she'll tell you real quick, you know, how many times we talked about that. Okay. Yeah, we, I started my project um, about a month ago and we actually just wrapped up yesterday. And with, I had the same problem with water coming into my basement, coming up through the concrete floor. Um, so it's cracking all over. And we realized when we started digging, like we had to keep going deeper um, and deeper to ensure we're at the footer. And I think in all, it was about seven and a half or eight feet that they had to excavate around the perimeter of my house. And with Chuck's help, I was able to figure out like where exactly the footer is. Um, I didn't know exactly what I was looking for, but just kind of with the camera and with the guys who I was working with, we were able to get down deep enough. And one of the things that we identified was the previous owners of this home, they actually installed a fringe drain, but they weren't nearly deep enough. So it actually caused more problems um, with water in the basement rather than, than solve them. So make sure you're at the footer. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah, Scott. That's the most important thing. If those guys did not get down to the footer, that they didn't do anything. I, I feel that they did. I mean, if you paid somebody yeah, to do that. I think okay. they did. I think the, but wouldn't the, wouldn't the problem be that the drain underneath the deck is crushed? I mean, that's my first suspicion. Right. If, if it is crushed and you, you said they sent a camera down there and you could see that it was collapsed. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So definitely... Um, it take, take the time to look at the video from Tiffany's job. I mean, it's, I don't remember the name okay. of the title, but um, it's just a couple of days ago. And okay. you'll see, it's not hard to pull the deck. I mean, these guys pulled a couple of her decks so oh. that they could, they could dig down and they're down eight, 10 feet. I mean, they're down there deep. So yeah. definitely dig that section out and make sure that that you've got good gravel and good perforated pipe, you know, in that section and then reseal that wall. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's, it, there's no easy fix on exterior uh, problems. There's no easy fix to it. You, you know, yeah. you're always, always digging down to the footer. But really quick, um, you could go into the interior systems, if you know what I'm talking about, where you cut that floor inside um, and put the same the footer tiles under the floor to a sump pump, lift it up and send it out. That That is an alternative. But you're so close. If it's just that one section of, of wall, that's what yeah. needs to be done. That's there's no doubt. That's that's what needs to be done. Yeah, I, I hate to put a sump pump when I'm so close to the edge of the fall off. You know, just let gravity do the work. 
I agree. You've got a walkout, so you actually could uh, do the cut all the way to the walkout and then come outside and continue gravity. But really pull that deck, take take the time, pay somebody to do it, whatever. If you pull the deck out yourself and let them do the labor, you'll save a whole bunch of money. And that's another yeah. thing. While we have Tiffany right here, um, <laughs> Tiffany, how much? I mean, you got to see her video if you didn't see it. How much okay. did you pay those guys to just do the labor? The uh, labor was fifteen thousand. Uh, oh. <laughs> but but that was the entire perimeter of the house. Now, how much was yeah. the estimates to do the job? Ninety-eight thousand. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's, <crazy. laughs> that's, so, that's not going to happen. <laughs> right, but that's just. I mean, I'm so glad she's in here to tell people how much it actually costs. If you yeah. hire a company, even us, we're we're in the medium range of we'd be sixty to eighty thousand um, to do Tiffany's house. Um, if we did your house, just that one wall, pull the deck, probably twenty five to thirty five thousand. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's just super costly work. So if you can yeah. do some of that yourself by like pulling the deck, that would help a lot. Um, yeah. and then just. If you if you could find the original guys that did that work, that would be good too. That's another good point. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 Well, thank you, you Chuck. Do you have any other questions, Scott? Oh uh, no, I, I think I think I'm good. Okay. So who's next on here? I'm Chuck, sorry to keep on like moving. To, Chuck, I'd like welcome. to go, Princess. <laughs> I'd like to share some photos, Chuck, and I don't know how. Okay. So again. If you, if you just, I'll walk you through it. At the okay. bottom of your screen, Thank there's you. a little green button that says share screen. I don't yep. know how to share the picture though. It's okay. That looks like your desktop. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> that's my place in Hawaii. All oh. right. Is that, is that where you are? Oh, no, you're in D.C. No, I'm in D.C. right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's where I go in the winter. Yep. Everything's there. Right. So can you see my little pointer at the same time as well? Yes. Okay. So this is my home here on the left and this on the opposite is not mine. And so there's about a 20 foot space between these two properties and the property line is right down the middle along here. Right. So what happens Chuck is now coming toward the front where my clicker is right here down here is a big old hill that slopes down. My whole front of my property is, is a large hill that slopes down. So this area, when it rains, is a three-inch swimming pool. Okay. The, um, the soil here, it just will not penetrate this soil at all. Okay. Listening to you talking to the first caller, I realized there might be another issue here. You see this drain pipe coming down? Yeah. Here? Okay, that comes down, and you can almost see it down in this corner. It it has it Sorry, just guys. it just dumps out, right? Okay. Here. So there's the pool. That's where it pools. Okay. Do Let you have me... any pictures? Sorry, do you have any pictures of the back of your building there? Yeah. Let me. Sh I'm getting. Yeah. Let me see. I do. Okay, that's the hill. So that's it. All. That's it the you front. Know, yeah, I can drain pipe out that way if needed. I realize. I ask you. Um, Okay. Is there a downspout in the back of the of that of this picture? Is there a downspout on your back corner there? So right where the end of the building is, right there, there it comes off the roof and it goes down into a pipe that's existing okay. that goes underground. So okay. that's not coming out anywhere at all. It goes well, okay. That's okay. Well, I don't okay. know how far it goes down, but it's an old pipe that has always right. been the drain pipe. Right. It's probably terracotta. It's probably a clay yes. pipe. Yes, it is. Okay. And it's well connected to the downspout system. I'm going to put it up here and people can look yep. at it for a minute. So what I did was I called this company and I said to them, I want you to build me a French drain because my walkway is a swimming pool over there. Right. And in my mind, I was thinking, um, uh, go 12 inches wide, go maybe 20 inches deep, um, put a landscape fabric, put gravel and then a perforated black drain and then cover it with more gravel, put pea gravel on the top and just leave it alone, okay? It was gonna dead, and then I thought, well, it can't just dead end. So, but I thought, well, I've got this great hill. I can just bring it down and make let it go out the hill onto the front. Then it's gonna go on the sidewalk. But, um, that, but then I watched your videos and I was convinced that I should use four catch basins and a PVC pipe. So my whole question today with you is, 
what system is it the perforated is it the rocks and the perforation pipe or is it a couple of catch basins and a pvc pipe the other issue is i that's my walkway i want to put stone and 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 flagstone it's not a very wide space so right where the catch basins would go is where my flagstones need to go and it's it's not all going to fit okay so you could actually put um, you can come back to you so we can talk face to face. Just stop your screen sharing. Okay. And, um, Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but it, pretty cool to see the you know what what the some companies charging and, and if you added all that up, it was close to five thousand um, to to do that forty five hundred. Yeah, That's not 40. a bad it's not a bad price uh, to do what they're talking about doing. Okay, good. So <clears throat> you want to create the walkway. We'll start with that. The flagstone's fine. You can, if you want to make a continuous walkway through there, that's fine. The catch basins could be underneath of that flag, underneath the stone. Okay. That's still going to collect the water. It's still going to get into that underneath there. It would be nice if you set you could set the catch basins off to the side of the of your yeah. walkway right. and just bring the bring the pipe over to your French drain. That's that would work even better. Okay. So you that's mean- not a Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's not a problem. So you've got you, you've got your walkway, then you've got a catch space, and it's just going to basically go underground and tie into the French drain. That's simple. That's still going to collect surface water very quickly. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think what you're when you say French drain, do you mean catch That's, basin and PVC no, or catch no. basin and corrugated? The French drain is actually the system that's underground. So it's a gravel perforated pipe. That's the French drain. Okay. Versus the PVC pipe? Yeah. What well, doesn't matter what kind of material it is. It's perforated pipe surrounded by gravel. That's a French drain. French Whether it be corrugated so or PVC. In case of gravel, okay. you've got perforated pipe with holes pointing down into the gravel, more okay. gravel, more gravel. And then how, whatever you want to make your top cut, you said pea gravel, that's fine because you want to set your flag stone, but that's fine. Right. And then that's, that takes care of the French drain. Okay. okay. So the catch basins, you're going to set off to the side. Okay. That's actually solid pipe from the catch basin over to, oh, okay. over to your perforated pipe. Okay. Solid pipe to the perforated pipe. Correct. And, and um, just, okay, go ahead. It's Okay. Princess, that will solve that problem. I promise you. I promise <laughs> you that will solve that problem. I'm so but happy. It, but in addition to that, there's two more things that you need to do. Okay. One of them, one of them is that that front downspout needs to go underground and out front also. Okay. Okay. So that's a that's a whole separate trench. You can use PVC or or corrugated. Okay. The one in the back, I suggest that you have that clean. The one in, oh, the, the, the terracotta? Correct. And find out where that goes. In a 1936 building, mm. it's very possible that that goes down into your sewer. It's not supposed to go there. Okay, mm-hmm. that's against the law today. But it, back then, they sometimes tied them directly into the sewer. So call Rotor Rooter, for example, and ask them to come out and clean this pipe. They'll, they'll tell you where it goes. And if it's mm-hmm. collapsed, broken, tree roots, they're going to, they will know where that pipe goes. That pipe's important mm-hmm. too, because all that roof water is coming into that yeah. area. Yes. Okay. So don't forget, there's, you know, definitely you'll solve the problem with French drains and cash space and it won't flood anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll, it may be soggy. Okay. It might be a little soggy, but it's not going to flood anymore. Um, and then after it dries out, of course, it's done. But those downspout drains are so important. It's the most important drain in the rainwater mm-hmm. drainage system.
So on that note, the terracotta pipe is uh, in the front where you see the one just dumping that I showed you. That actually has a terracotta pipe, but it's I, I cover it and I seal it and I don't use it okay. because it's clogged. And the rear pipe, it's a mystery. It's really scary to have somebody come and look. I'm afraid that it's not really going anywhere. It's not flooding the crawl space. That's what I, my big concern. But I will do what you say. It's a great suggestion. Um, yep. And the um, one last thing is when I showed you the little grate that I couldn't find the picture of, mm -hmm. um, do you think I need to grade away from the house? Along that side, the soil is actually lower going toward the building. Yes, you've got, those are called window wells. And yeah. that window well, there's many sizes. You can go to the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever you, whatever handy store you've got. And that one's a nine inch one, but you can yeah. get, this, you can get a 15 inch one. And uh -huh. all they do is you dig that area out and they actually, they just bolt right to the brick. Right. So you, can go, you can go higher. And that's why I was asking you where the floor level is, because we can't go, we don't want the dirt to come above the floor, of course, but definitely if you can grade that out. And you'll, that's a good idea, a very good idea. Well, I'm thinking I'll take the soil, which is, is pure clay, like concrete, and put it and have it slope up against the brick to slope down. Would you recommend that? Yeah. Yeah. Use your excavated soil to, as, as fill along the side of the house. Okay. Got it. Thank you so much. Love your channel. Love your videos. You're welcome. I hope we answered your question. And again, as you get into the project, if you want to holler back, um, you know, just we can go outside with your camera, show me what's going on. Same okay. thing we did with Tiffany. Um, and it was very helpful, I think, for Tiffany to be able to show me what's going on um, as they were digging and things like that. So it's all available if you need to do it. It's very helpful. Chuck, thank you so much. Have a great day. I'm going to stay in. Watch okay. Bye. <laughs> all right. We're not. Uh, we talked about it the other time, Chuck. I want to take you around the house one more time before I show you the crawl. Uh, we appreciate you helping us. Sure. Um, let, let me, while, while we got you, you just kind of show me around. But, you know, Jeff did a, a live help. He actually paid for the live help. And we looked down at his crawl space and gave him some good advice. Hopefully it's all working good down there. Um, and he's got some concerns about uh, the exterior portion of his house now. So, okay. All right. So and we were going to, you said to take the gutter, like you say, out to the ditch. Um, and Jeff's in Michigan. He's on an island. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're putting going to put a new sidewalk here. Okay. And uh, I was wondering if uh, I should uh, dig this up and waterproof it and put new insulation on it before they do the sidewalk. Because you were saying last time, don't bother digging it up and waterproofing it um, unless I put a drain tile on the outside of the footing, but I don't think I'm going to need it because my problems, my gutters, you know. Is this is the sidewalk going to go straight up against the house? No, it's about how it is now. Okay, yeah, you, I would still wait, and I wouldn't do anything over there yet. I really wouldn't. Um, I what would wait. I, you, said, you said don't waterproof it because to see how it is on the inside or something, or? Right. I think that you solved your problem on the inside. Um, but I mean, it's up to you. If you're going to dig down that wall, you definitely should put the put the drain down there. Don't don't dig down just to seal it. I mean, put the drain down there while you're down there. Don't. Yeah, that's that's kind of back backwards. OK, another company wanted to come in and uh, do a split system. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Um, it was an interior drain tile. And then they dig down 20 inches and put a put a uh, French drain right against wow. the wall. You ever heard of that? Right. Well, they're saying two systems, 20 inches. You know, that doesn't mean anything, Jeff. It's got to be at the footer. Whatever the depth of the footer is, that's where the drain has to be. It has to be at the footer. 20 inches, that might not be the footer. So, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you about that, but. It has to be at the footer level or it won't work. I see. You found so, that you found that out down in the crawl space. It has to be at the footer level. It must be. Yeah, it doesn't really even. Yes, yeah, so you're saying, OK. All right. So let's go back around. I get what you're saying. So you're saying leave it for now, maybe. My, my yeah. only thing is worried about is if I don't water, dig it up and waterproof it, 
and put see how it's got one inch insulation yeah that was a guy told me to put two a foundation guy he said to put two inch you know um then maybe help it but uh you think leave it for now and then i was worried the sidewalk once i put the sidewalk in if i dig it up it'll shift you know correct yeah I, I would just i would just wait all right wait okay so this is the back uh this is get they're going to regrade this i'm having somebody put a new backyard in because it's got some lumps in it so it doesn't drain good you know okay so are we going inside or yep 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 Um, and again, all these downspouts need to be buried and get out to that little stream on the side of the house. That's real important. I know. It's, I know. That's the whole problem, like you're saying. So this tree, see the 70 foot oak? Correct. Uh, there's a, one of these uh, roots goes under the wall and we cut it back about 20, 30 feet. And then we're going to go inside and show you. Uh, okay, let's, let's go in there and take a look real quick. The reason I'm kind of pushing you, Jeff, because there's a lot of people. So I just have to try to push people a little bit. <laughs> that, that's where the one-on-one -on -one comes in a little bit more, you know, but you're paying for my time there. And I can spend a lot more time with people on a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, oh, I see. Okay. It's really nice, you know. He's got he's got his wife Allison, and she's the camera cameraman. She's working the camera. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, real cool. <laughs> and she actually she actually goes down in the crawl space as well. And when oh, you see, yeah. you can see they've got to go through an opening in the floor to get in their crawl space. So a little bit tougher, but once you get in this crawl space, it's pretty nice. I think he just wants to show us this tree root. He's already done tremendous amounts of work down here. And if you, if Allison, when she gets down there, just kind of pans the camera around, um, you can really see where he dug along the footer tile and put new footer pipe in. He's got a couple of sump pumps. He did quite a bit of work himself here and, and truly saved, you know, five, 6,000 bucks um, doing it yourself. He's got a pretty good headroom in the crawl space, but can you see all that gravel that he's got over there? That's the footer system. And it's right beside the footer. Excuse me. But yes, go ahead and show me this root that you're talking about. And I'm glad you cut it off because it's real important that you stop that root. This is a typical looking crawl space to me, whether you're in Michigan, North Carolina, California, they all look the same. You know, it basically you've got, if you've got this much headroom, you can easily do these jobs yourself. And if you're getting really high quotes, um, they're saying, oh, there's not enough room to dig down there. You know, there's plenty of room to dig down here, I promise. Okay, so this root, this is about what the size it was like. Uh, and then don't, it dives, it dives. So we cut back, it goes 20, 30 foot that way, getting thinner, right? Correct. And, uh, what do I do? Dig it up on the other side of the wall? If you, if, you know, I think you're fine. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But if you want to, you could cut it off on the other side of the wall. That would be much better. It's lifting the foot. It's lifting this wall. It's, there's the beam moves. See all this block? Show them this block on the side. Okay. On the side. So, yeah, I see it. Yeah, if you if you want to dig it up on the outside and cut it, that would that would definitely kill the root. Um, there's probably products available that you could uh, inject around that area that would kill that root, but I'd be careful with those. Um, digging it up outside and cutting it off is the best thing to do. Okay, all right. So do that. And then I just want to show you this other pit, and that uh, that'll do it. I appreciate it. We we were going to sure. do this. Can I leave this under? Obviously, this root goes under this wall, and yeah. We could just leave it there, right? No, no big deal. No big deal at all. I couldn't keep digging, is what I'm asking you to find it. You know, because no, it goes. I don't, I, no, I, I wouldn't do any more excavation at all. All right. All right. Let's show them the pit, and that'll be it. <laughs> Thank you, Allison, for 
carrying that camera and crawling all around through there. Oh yeah, I'm good at it now. <laughs> <laughs> so this pit here is under one of these rooms and that's all I did. It, we used to get like a lake in here and I put the pit in and it's flopped. Uh, this ground's pretty hard. Anyway, uh, but my pit, it's got muck in it. You see this? Yep. Do I need to pull it back, back out and put landscape fabric around it or not? I, you know, if you could, that would be fine. But if you would get a Zoller pump instead of that pump. Um, yeah, it's you know, my only non-Zoller. It's my only okay. non-Zoller. So the Zoller or, or any really good pump, I mean, they're expensive, but they're going to be able to keep that much cleaner. They'll pick up half inch solids and, pu and pump them through. So that that would be what I would do is just replace the pump. But if you want to dig it out and put some fabric you're around it. You're telling me you would uh, switch this pump before you pulled it out and put the fabric on it? Yeah. And, you know, um, George just made a note um, about uh, Harbor Freight's pumps. Harbor Freight makes a really good pump, too. But make sure you get the cast iron pump um, from them, not the stainless steel one. Okay. And then uh, this, I, I put this pit here next to this sewer. It's not a big deal, is it? No, as long as you don't tie into it. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, okay. that's all good. Everything looks really good down there, Jeff. I think you did a really great job. Thanks. And then I'm putting the pumps up on these lifts. Is that fine? These little, see this thing? Yeah, that's fine. And if you don't want to, if you don't, if that ever fails, you could just put a brick under there. The the brick, all the brick's doing is it, it's not making it cycle more or less, but it's just keeping it out off the bottom of the muck that we're talking about. Okay. All right. I do appreciate it. I'm going to switch the pump and vacuum it out. And then it won't be that big. You say, don't, I don't, I shouldn't have to pull it out and put fabric on it really. Right. No, I would just get, and actually, you know, George, George reminded me that Harbor front, I can't remember how much they cost, but they're not expensive. It's a one third of a horsepower and it's yep. a Drummond, a Drummond there. It's yeah. He's got it for $170 versus a Zoller at three, 350. Um, that's a, it is a good pump. I don't know about their warranty, but you know, I, I have installed those and they work great. So keep that in mind for everybody. If you need a, a cheap, reliable pump, Harbor Freight does make a good pump. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll, thank we'll you. Let's go. Move around. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Eric, yep. he's got All his right. hand up. So I'm going to go to Eric. He's still there? Yep. Hi, Chuck. Okay. okay. So start um, start your video so we can see you. Uh, start my video? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you mean what I want to show you? Yeah. Can I just ask you a, a question first? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. So I, I watched a lot of your videos. They're awesome. Really, really good. But one thing I never uh, get uh, the point on is the depth of when you, the depth of your piping. I have okay. a, I, I yeah. have almost no slope in my yard, and I'm trying okay. to get down to a sump pump. And I know I need at least a quarter bubble to get 1% per eight feet. Uh, Something like that. That's, that's really <laughs> not, not a big issue, but <clears throat> yeah. If, if that's your, is that your only question, Eric? Um, well, that, and uh, I know you use a lot of corrugated, but uh, I'm leaning towards PVC. I'm in, I, I'm in Florida in Martin County, just near, okay. just North of Jupiter. Yeah. And um, so you I'm definitely need, working. It's okay. You definitely need yeah. a sump pump because our, you know, I'm here too, and yeah. our yeah. our yards and land is just so flat yeah. that there is there yeah. is no fall. I mean, there's virtually right. no fall. Yeah. So if you put a sump pump in there, a sump basin, that basin goes down two feet. Now you've got plenty of fall from wherever in your yard to get into that basin, no matter what. You can put a level on it, whatever you want to do, but you're going to be fine. So. The depth is going to be determined by your discharge, which is your sump pump. So if you've got, if you're coming into that pump, you know, underground at, at 12 inches, well, that means you can have a really good fall coming into that pump at 12 inches. <clears throat> the depth where you start might only be six inches, but it's going to keep going down, 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 down. And okay. yeah, that's, that's really the best answer to that. Um, there is no set depth. Um, when we install a French drain, we like to be 20 inches deep minimum. Um, right. And then from, remember, that's 20 inches. Now we need to create some fall 
to wherever we're discharging. That's why the sump basin works so good because we can really come down, come down into the pump. That was the problem that I was running into because the further down I go, the harder it is to get more fall, more slope on it. Because right. eventually I'm going to be so far down, I won't be. Able, I'm our our water table is probably what two or three feet sometimes. And these are I'm by the ocean. So yeah, if you're lucky. If you're lucky, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, was being, I was being generous. <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, but, you know, you can you can almost run level with your pipe. If it's solid pipe, it can be very level because the pipe's just going to fill up and, you know, eventually gets high enough that it flows. So don't worry too much about trying to get fall. That's that's, you know, people really worry about that. But if you if you've got from point A to the sump basin point B, you've got a foot, foot, foot and a half. You've got plenty of fall to get there. At 300 okay. feet, it's going to work. I promise you that it will work. I'm doing about 110 feet, but now I'm going to show you a video of uh, trying to catch a lot of rainwater from the gutters. I don't have downspouts, and I don't have them for a reason um, when they okay. built this house. This house is Go ahead. built in 70. Yeah. You want to share a screen? Yeah. So should I share the screen first, then turn the video on? Uh, I guess. Uh, just share screen and then... You should be able to start. Are you see my screen now? No, I just see your hand. It says Eric in your hand. And, and then I press on it, but it wasn't going through. Oh, oh. That, that's not <laughs> so, mine. <laughs> yeah, Princess is sharing hers. So it, oh, it does I'm, work. Well, sorry, guys. Let me turn that's it off. Okay. That's so okay. Sorry. She's just showing you that it does work. Um, you know what, Eric? Go ahead and try to figure it out. And if if I'm going to go on to another person, but just keep okay, going. Okay, yes, with, uh, uh, please. I, I don't want to hold you up. No, that's okay. Um, as soon as as soon as you're, you can just share the screen and it'll come up. As soon as you share it, it'll come up. Um, so any, I mean, we can share multiple screens. So you'll, I promise you, you'll figure it out. It's just, you yeah. know. I'll, <laughs> like, I'll work on it and listen to you guys <laughs> in the meantime. <laughs> All right. See um, it, yell at me. I'm, I'm going to mute it right now. If you end up seeing the video, you know. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Okay. okay. Um, somebody else, just let me know who. <laughs> there you go, Eddie. Sorry. I don't have a video, so I'm just going to talk to you. <laughs> That's but, fine. Uh, That's fine. Anyway, I've got a, I live in Lexington, South Carolina. The house is uh, 15, 16 years old. It's a uh, pier and beam construction with crawl space. So around here, they don't, there is no foundation wall around the perimeter. They just take the brick all the way down to the ground. Right. So uh, the previous owner had put in a French drain around the front and side of the house, inside the crawl space. There were no right. gutters on the house when I bought it. So I've since put in gutters on the whole house. All the gutters are drained away from the house. It slopes right. to the back. Uh, so the problem, it's not really a problem, more a question about this. So what the, the side that didn't have the French drain, I've gone in, the, the wall was damp. There was never any water standing in there. It, just, it was just damp. And so I put a uh, perforated pipe, French drain along whatever that, I don't know if you call it a footer or not, but what the bricks resting on down through there. Right. It and so far, that I've only this been about three or four weeks, but so far there's been no water collected through that. So, so but my question is, uh, on the outside of the wall, should I dig down and put a French drain there, or is it is that sufficient to have it inside? Because where does it go? Where does it go inside? Does it go to right now? Just going into a bucket because I want to see if it's gonna it's collecting okay. anything. I, I can exited out the, the wall there it's not that deep so i could dig down and just take it straight out you know and tie it into one of the other drains but i want to see if there's actually any water there before i cut a mm -hmm. hole in the brick so you know i don't know the the, the what scare me is around here are several of the houses in the neighborhood the, the piers have sunk and they've had to go in and put you know screw jacks in there to, yep. to get them to back up i don't want i don't want to have that so i don't know that having that what that that those piers the beat yeah the piers damp you right. know is bad that's that's just my my question okay so the damp piers are not bad that's not that's not the issue there um i understand that you don't want to put the helico piers down that's expensive um but 
you've got to be down at the footer. Yeah. I mean, where you where that facade of Rick comes down, it's just like being in Charlotte, where you know, I've done thousands of jobs in Charlotte, the same thing. It's all pure construction, and it, then the brick just goes around to hide. It's like a mobile home. You know, they're just hiding that right. crawl space. Skirt. It's a brick skirt, basically. Right. But there is a footer down there. And, I mean, it's a true footer. It is actually uh, should be, you know, 16 by 16. It might be 8 by 8 for the facade. But you've got to be down at that footer level. It's got to be right beside that footer. And if you're not collecting any water, you're probably too high. Or there's no water down there. I mean, it's that simple. Um, yeah, that I've got a, I put a French drain along that wall out. I was having some issue. The house next door, it comes down a hill into that area, and I got a little swell there. I put in a dry creek bed, a French drain. You know, my other gutter, my gutter goes out there. So the water's, that's like 10 to 15 feet away from the wall. So I right. feel like there shouldn't be a whole lot of water there, you know, coming in there. there yeah, I think I think what you just did works really good. That's going to solve the bulk of that problem. What I would suggest has it? I mean, have you been pretty dry the last month as well? We've been pretty dry even here in Florida for the last yeah. thirty days. Okay. Yeah, it hasn't. Um, yeah, we've gotten like a quarter of an inch rain at a time, basically. There's no been, you know, there hadn't been a big rain around here in a year or so. You know, we got like five yeah. inches of rain one time. And okay, um, yeah, just. Go ahead and leave your screen up there, and I'm going to keep talking to Eddie. Can you still hear me, Eddie? Yeah, I got you. Okay. So, basically, I would make sure you're at the footer level. And, again, if, if it's dry, there's not going to be any water. It's a good test to send it over to the bucket. That's a good idea. Um, but I'll bet you that when it rains and that groundwater starts to rise, if you can still see me on the side someplace, but um, if that groundwater starts to rise, you're going to get water into your system and it's going to flow over to that bucket. So give it a chance to rain. Um, and then also make sure you are at the footer level. Yeah, I was down at, you know, I'm right beside okay. right beside the footer. I mean, perfect. as far as that goes. That's perfect. Um, yeah, I think it that's just kind of, it, I went down the wall, kind of zigzags around the piers, you know, that are on the perimeter there. So. Got it. Yeah, that's came how we around, came around. It's about 30 feet of uh, a pipe there, and it's okay. all, you know, gravel. That's exactly how we do this, exactly the same thing. You know, whether we're, when I was in Charlotte, we'd come way down to Columbia, and, you know, I mean, it's all the same construction, but make sure that you are at that footer, which you are, and then now give it a chance to rain. I'll bet you that, that when the groundwater rises, that you're going to get water into that system and it will start to flow. If you want to put it on the outside, it's not going to make any difference either. The groundwater has to rise up and get into that system. Okay. So yeah, I just want to see it work. That's before yeah. I do any work. You know, I, <laughs> that's I, about I that's the lowest crawl space. It's about three feet over there. So I have to be in I there for it. a few hours. I want to see it work before I dig any more. I got it. But I promise you that it will work. Um, just give it a chance. Um, again, if, if it's not raining, you're not going to see a whole lot of water down there at all. And your dry riverbed that you got going on outside, that's really great. I think that's going to catch a bulk of your water. But we're talking about groundwater that rises up in the crawl spaces and basements. That's really the bulk of water is groundwater that comes up. And that's what you need to collect. So I think you got it. Yeah, I've got I've gone. I've encapsulated the crawl space and got a dehumidifier. And it's uh it's nice down here now. You used to yeah. be a swamp. All I right. Think, I think, Thanks, I think you got it. You're welcome, Eddie. I'll okay. see the video right now. I do. I remember your rain chain video. What are you going to do? My gutter. I was just putting the hose up there. They're yeah. open because I have so many trees. Got it. So many really want big oak you, trees. Yeah, you don't want to clean them, but you know, you could put screens up there. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> Nothing's ever really worked. I, I just flush them out. Actually, they're kind of self-cleaning. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the drains on these, but I have these on all four corners, but I'm going to go to where I was I was just dry fitting the piping. I was just using four-inch piping. Got it. Um, but, but let me start in the beginning with where the gate is and uh, go up, and I'll be real quick about this. So um, let's see here. This is from the house. I'm trying to 
come from all of the low spots and gutters and bring it down to the gate right here with a sump. Okay. And then it's about maybe a foot difference where I got to pump it out to the street. Got it. Um, that looks that looks good, Eric. I think you know right. I can tell you right now, if you'll just those just need to be underground. You know, so start six inches deep and you know try to keep that a little bit of fall, not much, um, out to wherever you're going to set that sump pump because you're using solid pipe and schedule um, SDR thirty five. This is going to work no matter what, no matter what, okay. no matter what, it's going to work. Um, it may hold a little water sometimes, you know, if it's running real level, but I don't think so. It's, it's okay. kind of like your, like your gutters. You know, your gutters have very little fall. If you think about it, they have very little fall. And yet you s just showed us a video of water coming out. It does, you know, it rises up and then it begins to flow. So it all looks really good. I love the fact that you use an SDR 35. Um, yeah. That'll give you a lifetime of never worrying about things. Corrugated would work as well. Sometimes you have to clean corrugated a little bit more often, but um, that looks really good. And I well, like how you've got it laid out. It looks good. I get grass over, but the, one of the reasons I didn't use corrugated is because I have to have them come in, trim the palm trees all the time and, and, right. and the oak trees. And I didn't Bring want the weight to crush it. But this is a negative spot right here. And this is something I wanted to ask you. I was, you know, putting a, um, a, a basin here and, and up here catch the roof but i collect a lot of water in here i built this area up after i took a tree out uh, you know i stripped yeah. the grass and yeah had this huge oak tree right here taken out that was i can see the, the low spot i can see the yeah. low spot. so it, it's always been here and i built up along the foundation just to kick it back out perfect um, but it's kind of a v in here um so if you and, put a catch basin if you put a catch basin there where your mouse is right now that's where it's that going yeah, remember that the catch basin is going to make that line start deeper. And yeah. so that just means that you have to continue that fall a little deeper you know, as you go right. out. But your sump basin, you, you've got it no matter what. You've still got, you're still going to have fall. Be careful that you don't go uh, too level because then the water can actually come back to where your right. catch basin is. That's, but yeah, yeah, you got it. That, but that do you think basin, that... Do you think that, and this is the only place I was thinking of a French drain right here, but uh -huh. then I would have to go deeper for a French drain, right? Right. So, you know, I the, what I was going to say, you know, I like how you got it laid out, but the sump basin, there's so many different people that comment about why do you put the sump basin beside the house? There's two reasons. One is there's electricity close to the house, makes it easy for the electrician. But number two is that you can keep your fall. Um, so you're going to run out, you know, X amount of feet to the sump pump, to the basin. But if you put that basin, for example, you know, on the corner someplace, now you've, you you've, you can go much deeper, you know, and really have good flow into the basin. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and I thought about that because I saw in one of your videos where you brought it back to the house, to the low spot. And I, and I gave that some thought. But my, my problem is that to lay electrical for this house. I have my drain field and everything up here. And it's this, it's just as, I was actually gonna put two sumps in, one here and one by the gate where it's going to end up. Okay. But um, I just didn't have the power hooks up, hook up, hooks, hook up for it. And to lay all the schedule 80 and get all the power going was a huge ordeal to keep adding pumps. Right, you uh, only need one pump. I, I, I see no need for another pump. But, you know, basically an electrician, he would he could put a conduit along that block right there. Um, you know, and it would be above grade, you know, right at grade right. or tack it to the wall. I can, right. you know, electricians are a dime a dozen in Florida and they are not that costly. So, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I, 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 I understand. Uh, yeah. It, well, there was so some, again, um, that's okay. I wasn't constantly like I said, doing that because I really looked at it. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, if, if it was us, we'd put that some some basin somewhere alongside right the house. Yeah. Well, I, there might be a better place for it, but it, from this photo, I'm just saying we'd put it someplace close to the house, you know, and basically have that electrician, you know, go ahead and wire that to that spot. And then it's inch and a half PVC or two inch, whatever you want to run. Um, and the trucks can run over that without any problem. So. 
Right, right. So you say then don't put the drain. Well, I was kind of catching two angles in the yard because the yard is actually pretty big. You're only seeing one section of it. But um, yeah. yeah, if you if you're saying you need another pump, you might need one out there by the gate. But again, yeah. it would be the same the same principle. You won't have to have all this downspout drain running that length, you know, to that far pump. It would just go to this pump, and you could actually send one pump into the next. Um, so it's just like a series, you know, and check valves keep water from going back and forth. And that, okay. would, yeah, so I would definitely put the sump pump closer to the house and tie all of it into the downspout drains into that, catch basin, French drain, all of that to one. And then out by the gate, if you've got that same low spot where you need a French drain or a catch basin, put that into the second pump out there. And I, I a lot of people don't understand, you know, how flat our yards are here in Florida. I mean, we deal with, level ground it's very yeah. difficult to yeah. move water yeah. without a sump pump but you you i think yeah. you got it um hopefully okay. that was some good advice to do the pump closer but again if you want to continue your plan it will work but just remember that if you put a catch basin in there it's going to make that line going out to the gate go deep it's going to have to go down it'll be 18 inches deep by the time it gets to the gate yeah 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 that's uh how 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 far down on the on the basin can you go with the in the the, the line in? I mean, you need at least what nine inches, nine and a half inches for. The, I bought a Zoller nine uh, M ninety eight. Oh, but you need what nine and a half inches? Um, yeah, that would be a good guess. I'd say eight to nine inches. I um, mean, if you come in at the bottom of that basin, it will still work, but it basically makes it makes that pump cycle more often. So right, I gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, I really appreciate it. And um, I might do a, an individual um, help if that's yeah. available. You're welcome to do that, Eric. Um, and then the other thing is, is, you've heard me say it already, as you get into that project, shoot me an email and, and I'd be happy to take a look at what you're doing. You know, I can put it on my phone if I'm on the job site and just you know, give you some quick answers real quick. So. But yeah, you okay. got this. You got this. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. I watched all your videos. You're awesome. You gave me a lot of good information. It was very helpful, all of your videos, and I really appreciate it, Chuck. Sounds, sounds really you. good. You're welcome. Okay, right. you guys have a great day. I'll, I'm going to watch the rest of them here today. Okay. So, yeah, okay. go ahead and um, end your, uh, end yep. your thing. I'm doing that now. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> um, so we got Eric's done. Tiffany's got uh, a question. Somebody else. <laughs> Yeah, so I kind of wanted to just show you um, the completed job and okay. just for like last tips or feedback um, that you might have. So, sure. I uh, start in this direction. You can see, I think I got you turned the right way. Yep. Um, backfill is complete. It's been tamped down. And like, we kind of went over this side. So everything looks. Oh, wow. That looks really good. Yeah. So this is Tiffany's completed job. And again, if, if the people that are left in the chat, if you haven't seen this video, you really should take a look and see what this looked like when it was excavated. <laughs> And there's the deck. Like I said, you know, they pulled that whole deck out of there and tunneled and, and dug down through, you know, between the joists. Uh, they tunneled Everything underneath the right. sidewalks. So here's the area I'm still not, and we've talked about this. Um, it doesn't look entirely um, proofed to me because, of course, you can still get water back behind there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should I have them maybe dig this down a little bit deeper and bring the dimple board like so that it covers completely. Okay. Or yeah. What would your um, recommendation for that? I, okay. I think remember that's going to be concrete when they put it back. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that if they could somehow seal what they have against that core section of concrete, um, they can caulk it, they can do whatever they want. But when that concrete goes back across that area, I think you're going to be fine. Even though there's probably going to be an expansion there, I think that'll be fine. I really do. Okay. If they could get a piece of uh, something 
that that could drape down. But remember, you, you, you don't want it to be up above the concrete because it didn't, wouldn't look right. Um, right. They could salt cut that a little cleaner and really yeah. pen it. That that's that probably be the sure. best salt. Yeah, salt cut that really clean and pin that right up against theirs. You know, and put their mass tech, their glue all across yeah. there so that it's tight. And then concrete the area back, and I think you're fine. Because right now you're right, water is going to get behind it. But and we're talking about a dimple board that sheets the water down the side of the foundation into the French drain, the, the footer pipe that's at the bottom of that, and that's like eight feet down there. It's way down there. That looks good. She has two two types of foundations. She's got. An, an old block or an old brick. She has three types of foundation. She has a brick foundation. She has a poured wall foundation and a block foundation. So there's lots of different sections of this home built in 1936 or 38. Um, typical construction. And as you add to the home, this is what, what you get. Oh, they got the stone, the border put back and everything. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready, ready to put plants down there. I know. Get my yard back together. <laughs> But yeah, you can see everything is uh, all in. And then the drains out here and you can actually see, started watering the lawn again, but you can see this is where it drains. Yep, looking really good. So I invited Tiffany because I thought maybe some people might want to ask some questions about, you know, how much did it cost? What was it like to have people, uh, you know, working that you're paying and then you're consulting to get the advice. Um, but yeah, I mean, she, this is really great. And I'm glad Tiffany did the consult because I really think we put her mind at ease. And um, there's, she has a lot, couple of different things that's always plan A, plan B for a basement. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about solving a problem on the outside, but you need plan B. And we've already talked about that. Basement waterproofing is a very tough thing when it's after the fact. When you're building a home, it's a piece of cake. But if you've already got a home that's built and you are trying to solve that problem, it is you better have plan B because plan A might not work no matter what somebody tells you. Um, no, no matter what their warranty is, better have plan B. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, plan B, we'll see. Well, when it finally rains, we'll see how this one holds up and then uh, figure out when I need to start plan B. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Any other questions, Tiff? While you're right there, um, I think that was mostly it. I uh, just really wanted to make sure that part was completely waterproofed. Um, and then, yeah, I for sure will have some questions when I start the basement, the inside portion. Actually, okay. I do have one. There was okay. one of the comments on um, my video that asked if this could have been resolved by just doing the internal drainage system. Could that have been done? Or does this particular, like my house, my job require both the internal and external drain? I think you hopefully the outside did it. But remember, we just said plan A, plan B. Because you've got two different foundations. Um, hey, Tom, sorry. Uh, because you've got two different foundations, one, like I said, I really think they dug, dug this out. I do. So you've got that poured foundation, and then you've got the block. You almost have to do the outside and have the dimple board sheet it down to, to solve that particular wall. But you could, probably could have done the inside if you did that knee-high wall that we talked about. If you did yeah. that, it would probably work, but you still might need to do the outside. So you end up with both. You know what I mean? Okay. If, if it was a regular basement with block all the way around it or uh, the poured, about poured foundations, yes, you could have done the inside. But you've got a really neat house that's not like that. So it just makes it a little tougher to really solve the basement problems. Tiffany sent me some videos, and I'm going to make another video about this, where well, I guess it was when she first moved in. And can you see all the cracks on her floor? She actually was stepping on these cracks and water would come up. I mean, that's how much water is under that floor. It's tremendous amounts of, of water. And I believe they dug this out. I think that it was a crawl space and they dug this out to achieve headroom, whether it would be for the garage in this case, or just headroom um, in this area. 
So <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think she's got this. And hopefully it's going to rain. It doesn't rain a lot in California. But when it does rain, I hope that she gets back to us and shows us what goes on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I will bring in for sure. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Tiffany, I will probably text you later. I know you got to get back to work if you if you jump out of the group um, and text you a little bit later. Okay, sounds good. Take care, everyone. Good luck with your jobs. You're welcome. Thanks, Steph. Bye. answered all the questions. Bye. Yeah, go ahead. Eric. Can I just ask you a question about one of your videos? Yeah. You remember, remember when you did the rain chain and you used mm -hmm. the piece of culvert? Yeah. Yeah. Did you put a cap on the bottom of that culvert? I was always curious. In that, see, that was in North Carolina. Well, there was also one in Florida, but no. Um, we just put, we fill the all with gravel at the bottom, and that actually secures the chain. Okay, that secures the chain as well. Um, and that way, we have a discharge that comes out of the culvert. Correct. But, it, you know, for the most part, unless it, if it's just a small rain, it's just going to go down through the gravel into the ground. Um and then if it rains hard, then that culvert starts to fill up and then it goes out the okay. discharge. Goes out gotcha. the discharge. That discharge can be actually under the gravel as well, but it's better if it's you know a little bit above the gravel. Right. And um when I, I bought one of those sump uh sump basins that you use all the time. Uh-huh. But given I want to put some fall and and I might end up deeper. I can always just use a 20 inch catch basin with some risers on it, right? How far down do you think in Florida I can go before well, I yeah. reach the other <laughs> side of the earth? <laughs> so you can go as deep as you want, but that groundwater is going to determine a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, like here on my property, I, I, I mean, I've showed some videos. If I dig down a foot, I'm hitting groundwater. Even as dry as it's been recently, I still hit groundwater. Right. But other places, you know, as we go into uh, like central old sections of Orlando, I can dig down five, six feet and not hit any water. Yeah. So it, just, it really depends on where you are. You could double up that basin too, just cut the bottom off, put another basin in it if you need to go deeper and just tape, tape around that seam. Real, oh, real I got you. Tape. Good idea. Yeah, there's, there's lots of ways to go deeper. The better would be to, to buy the culvert, but culvert pipe's expensive. I mean, yeah. somebody sent me uh, a, a Comment that now twenty feet of eighteen inch culvert is like four hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, oh so it's very expensive. Two two cat spaces work good. It looks weird when you're putting it together, but when you put it in the ground, all you're going to see is the lid. So, Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you for that help. I really appreciate yeah. it. And, and again, if you guys, if you have any questions later on, you know, just email me or. If you want to do the one-on-one, -on -one, sign up online, and we're good to go. Thank you very much for everything, Chuck. I really appreciate it, and it was You're great welcome. to be on your, <laughs> Thanks, your guys. life help. So, uh, so uh, old people, I'm going to go ahead and end this, and you know, okay. hopefully, you guys learned something and had a good time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great day. Great day. Bye. Bye. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Bye.